So next up, we're going to create a classic bass sound from scratch. We're going to use Ableton's operator to create this kind of square waveformed analog sounding old school bass sound. Now that might sound a little bit complicated if you're not used to sound design, but honestly, if we take it step by step, it's actually not too hard and there's so many different possibilities for it. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this kind of square base. I'm going to use operator to do this. So I'm going to drag and drop operator onto a new MIDI channel within here. And we're also going to copy across those MIDI notes from the other base. So we've got something to work with. And let's hear how that sounds to start with. Let me just solo that for you. Now that's way too high. I might knock these uh, notes down maybe one octave. Let's just keep it there for the time being. And I'm just going to close that down, go back to the operator panel. And this is where we're going to start tweaking this patch to really give it kind of an old school plucky bass kind of sound. Now, at the moment, it's playing a sine wave. For this kind of bass, we're going to go with a square wave, but there's loads of other wave types that you can play around with and it gives you a whole different effect. I'm going to go for the square three. Now I want to make this quite plucky, so I'm going to take the sustain down because I want it to be quite plucky. And I'm also going to decrease the decay as well. And I'm going to do, I'm going to add another oscillator in there. I'm going to add another square uh, oscillator in there. So for this one, I'm going to select the wave on this one as square three. I'm going to increase the level as well, bring it into the mix. Now that sounds horrible. That's because it's they're feeding into each other like an FM uh, synth does. And I'm going to change the mode. I'm going to go over to here and rather than feeding into each other, I want them to be separate. So I'm going to go into this mode right here. So we've got two there that are playing. And in fact, I want to take them down one octave. That's a bit, let me take it down. So it's a nice bassy kind of sound. That's better. That's really nice. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly detune that second oscillator. So I'm going to adjust the fine here just by a little bit. Just adds a little bit of texture in there. It makes it a little bit, a little bit more unpredictable. So we've got those two oscillators playing quite nicely with each other there. I'm going to make sure that obviously the sustain is all the way down. I want to get the same kind of effect as we have with this one. Just want to kind of match these up. Yeah, that sounds quite nice. Right, next up, I'm going to add a little bit of attack to it by uh, kind of turning on the pitch envelope. Now, obviously, that's a bit too much. Basically, the pitch envelope is kind of going, it's starting high up in pitch and it's going down. It's taken too long to do that. So I'm going to adjust the decay. So we just basically we're just kind of giving it a bit more attack on that front end. Just gives a little bit more attack as a bass kind of sound. Now, next up, I am going to play around with the filter. Now, the filter can do some really interesting stuff, uh, especially when you start changing the mode. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to take the frequency down and maybe up the resonancy a little bit. just rolling a little bit of that top end off. However, it's when we start changing the modes on the filter where it really starts getting interesting because in clean mode, there's no kind of, there's not really many options within here. However, once we start switching to these different modes, we get a whole different sound with it. See, this now gives us filter drive and also the shaper. So I'm going to increase a bit of the filter drive and change the shaper a little bit just to kind of see what kind of textures we can get in there. There we go. We're getting that kind of plucky old school kind of sound. It really sounds quite cool. Let's try a few of these different modes and we get a different kind of sound. 
So that hard one might be kind of useful. It might be quite good. But I think the sine one is definitely the winner. That seems to have that nicer kind of knocking kind of effect. So we definitely got that kind of old schooly kind of bass sounding. However, there's one thing that we can add to it, which makes it even more interesting. Now, with the Juno 106, for example, there is an amazing... Uh, chorus on it. That's one of the major kind of features that really makes the sound sound how it does. Now, one of the uh, Tal, the one who makes Tal Uno LX, the 106 uh, replica plugin, they also produce a Tal chorus. So the, the chorus that is actually belongs to the Tal Uno LX that actually kind of replicates that 106 chorus. The Tau Chorus itself, the plugin, is actually a free download. And I tend to use this quite a bit on different things. So this is just the Chorus mod module from that 106. And this, honestly, will transform any synth that you put on it. Now, it has, it has two different modes for Chorus. I tend to use the second mode. That works quite nicely. And honestly, the difference is amazing. you get so much width out of it. You've got the stereo width control here, so you don't have to make it as wide as that. But what this does is it really kind of takes a bass and makes it just fill up so much. So if you've only got a bass, if you've only got a bass playing within your track, then it kind of it fills that kind of bottom end, but also you have that lovely wideness coming from the top end, the distorted end of that bass. Now, obviously, we want to keep that bottom end quite tight. We want to keep that in mono so that it's not going to be so flabby and muddy in that bottom end. But we can do that quite easily with one of the effects within Ableton. We have the utility. I'm sure it's the utility. Yes, so the utility has a base mono switch. So as soon as you activate this, anything below this dial at the bottom here, the this at the moment it says 120 hertz. Anything below 120 hertz is automatically made mono. This is very handy for this effect because that means we can take this bass noise and make the bass mono, but that top end of the bass we can make that um, we can make that as wide with the chorus. So you can solo just the stuff that is actually being made mono here. So you can adjust it so you can kind of find that subby range that you want to make sure that is mono. I think that's going to work nicely. Let's unsolo that. So you get the wide top end from that chorus, but you get the, the kind of mono bottom end. It makes it fit in the mix a little bit better. And of course, we will put an EQ on there as well, just kind of uh, just take out a bit of that bottom end as well. I want to make sure that we're rolling a little bit of that bottom end off. Now, one thing we can do with this is add a bit of reverb to it, the top end at least. We don't want to obviously add reverb to the, the, the kind of mono subby end that's just, again, going to muddy up the mix. But because we had that pluckiness of the bass, we can add a bit of reverb to it. And rather than actually put it on the track, now usually I would put it on the track, I don't want to take away from the punchiness of the bass. So I'm actually going to take that reverb and I'm going to put it on the first return channel. I'm going to increase it to 100% wet and I'm going to have a low cut on it and I'm going to take off the high cut. Basically, I want to make sure that any of that bass end is not being put into this reverb. Of course, I could get rid of this uh, low cut completely and put a, an EQ on before this if I wanted to, but I'm just going to stay to this uh, plugin and go with it that way. So I want to make sure that just this top end of the um, the reverb is actually what we're going to hear. The top end of the bass is what is going to be sent to the reverb anyway. So I've got that kind of set up roughly how I want it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send some of that bass to that. There you go. We have this kind of lovely big effect 
from the reverb. And in fact, what you could do is maybe even make that reverb wider. In fact, let's see, let's put the utility on here and we can widen it from here so we can add a bit of width to it. The chorus is already making that bass top end quite wide anyway. And then we're taking that reverb, and making it even wider. Of course, you don't need to do this. You can keep it a lot more mono if you want to. Totally up for the effect that you want. Let's hear it with the drums. And of course, I'm going to put the side chain on there as well. I'm going to copy that across from the other bass that we've got here, just to make it fit in nice with the mix. And that's kind of an example of creating a square base from scratch. You can obviously tweak that in many different ways with the different filter types, even with the different waveforms to kind of get different effects. But that's generally kind of using that, that chorus effect and using that filter, the different drive on the filter really kind of gives you that old school kind of analogy kind of bass. And using the FM synth like operator gives you that kind of Juno-ish kind of sound yeah, it kind of works really nicely and obviously you can experiment and get a whole load of different effects. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video, then smash a like. And if you want to be notified about new videos, hit the subscribe and notification buttons. Peace!